Yeah, that's where we left off. Just an hour ago. I still wish I had Kitty's YouTube video, but I didn't prepare any. So I'm gonna talk about boring stuff instead. But this is very important. So I, I want to continue the conversation about uh, properly loading data into Transmart to make sure that the integrity of the relationship between different variables is preserved. So we have heard a lot about I2B2, and I actually asked some questions about it during lunchtime, and now I know what, who to blame uh, about the issues. So um, I2B2 has a um, star schema for clinical, data, for clinical data, and, and that's the star schema that has been used in Transmart. You probably all heard that Transmart was built as uh, on the top of I I2B2 or uh, as an extension of I2B2 to um, combine together clinical and molecular data. But at the heart of the Transmart clinical data schema is um, a star schema. And we also had some conversations in the previous um, meeting about where uh, if you can just get um, I2B2, you can connect to the schema in Transmart. I'm not sure this is correct because all the data in uh, Transmart, they go into this observation fact table. And the other dimensional tables, they're ignored for the most part. Even visit dimension, you would think we have visit name, it should go into visit dimension. But if you just load it as is in a column, it just goes into the observation fact. So each observation fact is one row of data. Each subject is associated with one observation fact per row. You don't really have a um, standard relational database when you have multiple table and all the data in this multiple table kind of wide format. And here I have um, an example. So if you want to to, to learn what IT, how I2B2 looks, there is, you can install it, and it's not that difficult. And when you install it, there is a sample data that comes with it, and then you can query it and just get some sample of the data. Here's the data that I got from, from the I2B2, and um, that's the structure. So what you have here, and the structure that is being reused in Transmart. So you have your patient ID, then you have your concept, and in this case, there are two concepts. There is the um, ICD code, and then there is a uh, probe name. So talking about um, molecular data, theoretically, you can put molecular data into I2B2, but that's going to be one subject, one probe, 50,000 times, and then next subject, next probe, 50,000 times for each probe. So it's just not very convenient, but theoretically, you can. So you have um, your variable here, and that's pretty much it. And all the other uh, kind of uh, data here, optional. So a new variable can be, if it's a categorical, then you just have the name here. And if it's numerical, you also will have value here in numerical value uh, column. So once you load your data, think of it as looking like this. You have subject, you have variable, subject, variable one line and you can have numerical value for a variable if there is one so all your data is an observation fact and uh, the only way to connect it is through this category cd this is crossover study example it's um, kind of almost the same example as i have discussed before but in this case for your um, Subject one, uh, you had two different adverse events that were detected, uh, that were recorded um, in period three. And for your patient three, you also have two different adverse events that were recorded in uh, period three. And one of them was severe, the other was mild, uh, related, non-related. And for this uh, subject here, both were severe, one related, one non-related. So um, different um, it's kind of combination of the data. 
So, and what's going to happen even if you load the, your data per period? So in my previous example, um, when we load data per period, all of the data per period, then you can align all of the uh, variables nicely and you can um, have your data connected the right way. Here, even if you load your data per period, you're still not going to connect the right data with the right uh, drug dose and with the right treatment uh, because you simply, uh, because you have two now observation facts for the same subject. So uh, when you try to drop it in the grid view, you will have headache and earache, but you won't be able to say which one is severe, which one is mild, which one is related, which one is non-related. Because these facts are associated independently unless you connect them together <coughs> they're just going to be um, independently dropped into the grid view and if you download your data they're not going to be um, associated in this white table the same way they are associated in your original data okay here's another example here you have the same adverse events um, different study days so, and if you load them uh, one separate from another, you have adverse events, earache and headache, and then study day one to three, and you try to associate them in your grid view. Um, you're just going to have all of the days associated with all of the adverse events because the subject had days and the subject had these adverse events. Um, and it does not really have any connection between the day and the event. So you can, of course, load it the right way, and you can load uh, the days under each adverse event, and then you'll know when it started, uh, when this adverse event started for each subject that had this adverse events. Although this can make it very difficult to collect all of the subjects that had the same adverse event. So there are some trade-offs. So what do we do? We just, in these cases, we just associate everything with everything. So ideally, we would like to know what, how the data is going to be used and how our customers are going to run the different analysis. But uh, um, as Alex mentioned, there are very many customers and they do different type of analysis. So the best we can do is to associate everything with everything as much as we can. So if we load adverse events many different ways. We have adverse events by causality, by organ class, by severity, by day from, day to, serious, treatment emergent, and so forth. Whatever, uh, whatever qualifiers is av are available for the adverse events, we will try to use them in the category CD to connect them to the right adverse events. This still doesn't really answer all of the issues because, first of all, your category CD has a limit. It's 250, maybe 200 in some instances, and the whole category, uh, category pass from the study name to, to your um, data is 500. So there are only so many um, associations that you can make. And also, if you make your tree really granular, too deep, it will be very hard to collect the observation facts that you want to collect and, and construct a subset out of it. So you don't really want to bury everything. So you're trying to, to do the best you can. And even then, there are still some analysis that you probably won't be able to do. And uh, it's just something to be aware. And if this is the kind of analysis that your customers will be interested in, then the data will probably have to be pre-analyzed before they are loaded into Transmart. So one of the typical analysis that is done for clinical trials is um, analyzing adverse events. As I've said, they are not really loaded per visit. And um, uh, what the clinical statisticians often do, they would um, break them into buckets. They want to know how, what kind of adverse events um, and how many of them were 
uh, recorded during the first few weeks of the trial and then the middle of the trial and the end of the trial. Um, it cannot be done in Transmart 16.1, and I don't really think it's going to be possible even if you have longitudinal um, capabilities in the 17.1, because you can, we can load dates that are associated with this kind of um, events, but these dates um, are going to be unique for each subject, and they're not going to reflect where they are in the clinical trial, because each subject is enrolled in the study at a different date. So you still cannot really form a cohort of, of subjects um, or events that happened during the first few weeks of your trial. So this is just some um, kind of caveats that we have to be aware of as uh, curators. And I think some kind of guidelines on a Transmart website would probably be helpful for people to avoid corrupting the data while loading into Transmart inadvertently through no fault of their own. So, and here's the take home message. So to properly load your clinical trial, you have to read clinical trial protocol and understand the data and understand the design of the clinical trial. Um, then you have to, if, if you can talk to your customers to see what kind of analysis they are planning to do. Because as, as Becca has mentioned, there are different ways that you can load your data. You can load everything you have visit first and then all of the different variables. So you can have all the different variables and visit. And for some customers, having all of the variables on the visit would be more use, more, um, would be easier because um, in one of my discussion, one of the customers told me that um, most of the time what he does is he takes all of the variables, all of the values from visit one and then compares them all of the variables, all of the um, values for the last visit. And that's all the analysis that he does. So loading everything with visit on the top would probably be easier for that particular application, but we still load visit last because there are other people that use data a different way. So and in some cases, um, when the clinical trial design is complex, you may have to associate your data not necessarily with visit, but with some other var uh, variable structure of this, of a particular clinical trial to make sure that then you can retrieve them being associated with the um, right dose, with the right treatment, um, and with the right outcome. And here just a few words about Clairvite analytics. So that's all I have. Um. Any questions or comments from the audience? Have you ever tried putting the same data, same data set in two different models? Like organizing by visit and by... Yeah, I do it all the time. Yeah. Sometimes I even present it to customers and ask them to pick one, but they refuse, so I have to just make a call. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the, the patterns that you identify for coding exposures. And do you have any feel for how, what is the best way to go about this in, in terms of uh, being able to compare across studies the nature um, uh, of those exposures and uh, the impact on the queries? Well, to go across studies, um, you know, if you have different trial design for different studies, to go across studies, you may just need to pre-analyze them before you load them into Transmart to get them into the same study structure. Because I think it would be very difficult to um, compare across studies, uh, um, parallel design clinical trial with crossover design clinical trial without adjusting the structures of the Transmart tree. 
to somehow put them in, into the same pattern. So, but if I had those studies, I, I'm sure I could design uh, a common tree that would um, preserve the data and would allow to merge. And maybe this is a, a question for everyone, I mean, because several trees have been presented. And uh, how do you feel about having a compositional approach to devising those master, those transmat master trees, depending on the kind of data acquisition modalities, and having a, a, a libraries of trees that you could assemble as you go along? It's a question for everyone or just for me? Yeah, I think if, if you had a collection of some trees was was kind of a good description what they were used for and uh, just uh, highlighting some uh, pitfalls of um, different, uh, well, di advantages of disadvantages of different um, designs and what are they good for, then it could help um, users who start just using it. and. I can appreciate that you want to put everything into STDM structure and it would be beautiful if everything could fit into it, uh, but for practical purposes it may not work. So having some flexibilities with Transmart trees for different projects I think would be good. But then at the same time, as I said, we can then download data in STDM format or um, have it as just additional download option in Transmart to share it with other users in a common format. Oh, you have a question? Uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, so are you trying is, and once you have, a, I'm talking about crossover in a studies, so you, once you have a two different data set in the table, Transmart, and then you have two different representation with trees, so you want to combine them and you know, the, make a consistent you know, one you know, the data set and the presentation, right, with tree. Is that your, your goal? Well, the crossover and clinical trials that we have curated, we have also curated them in a consistent format, but it's different from a regular uh, parallel kind of controlled studies where... So what you want to do is actually the, using existing two different you know, trees and uh, data set, you come up with a single tree. But uh, my question is, do you do that kind of you know, the transformation within Transmart? No, that's how we curate and map data. So oh, we I'm sorry? Transform anything within Transmart. We just uh, I'm just in a different format. I would, in, a, in a dumb question, why don't you just in a, the export to data set and, and then you actually do whatever you want, normalization, whatever you curate, and then go back to in a, just in an ETL based in a Transmart in a the standard? Why you want to do within Transmart? Oh, within Transmart, we don't really change anything about uh, Transmart tree designs within Transmart. We try different designs before we load the data to make sure that it, it fits the purpose. And um, then we load it in the format that we have designed. So all the different examples that I had here, it's just for illustration purposes and that's <coughs> not what we use. So. Um, I, in the, the first part of my uh, talk, I have presented one Transmart tree design for a standard clinical trials and how we map it according to the clinical trial protocol. When we have a clinical, uh, a crossover clinical trial, we pretty much follow the same, um, the same outline. We just add like period if you have to, to make sure that our data align. Maybe I didn't answer your question, but I'm sorry. I